Hey guys, it's Shane, and uh, this is another episode of Talking and Drawing. Uh, kind of doing this one on the fly. was working on a page, and I'm like, oh, I'm doing something interesting here. I'm messing with shadows, and I kind of a different type of shadow. This would be what I would call like closer to a... a I'm doing a weird technique. I, one of those things you see all the time in comics especially older comics where computer coloring wasn't so great. It's a line work trick when colors were flatted more where you're trying to get like a fade effect, but through people trying to figure out how to come up with a fade effect and, um, you know, without, with simpler colors, basically the, the came, you know, some, some innovative line work had came from that. So, some of this effect, I think, still works nice today, even with computer colors. So I kind of wanted to stop and record this really quick. So this is a little not planned and kind of on the fly, but hopefully uh, I'm going to talk through a, a kind of like a classic technique you would probably see in a lot of like anybody from, um, I don't know, gee, anybody from, you know, maybe... Uh, uh, I don't know, like everybody. This would probably go. I don't. I don't know. This has been around. Like I, I can't name one artist I've seen this effect with, and I, and I don't even think it has a name. But basically, what you're trying to do is take a shadowy figure, and you're you're trying to fade them. You know, kind of like there's a mist, like they're walking through flames or walking through mist. Some of the hatching will be different, but pretty much the same technique is gonna, you know. Be there all the same. So the figures I'm playing with right now are um, kind of trying to explain this drawing. So I have like uh, the Phantom character, not Phantom, uh, Phantom Stranger character here, and uh, he's doing like a Dracula cape thing. And through the cape, you're gonna see these mysterious bad guys pop up in Metalman. <clears throat> I'm not really talking about that, but. To get this effect, you basically need your figures kind of silhouetted out. And the lighting I'm choosing here is kind of like a dramatic rim lighting, overhead lighting, which kind of highlights their forehead. And then from there, you end up with like a, basically a silhouette. So their head kind of casts a shadow, and I've built this pattern. So like I've already done it here, so I'm going to toss over to this guy real quick. Um, now, to kind of make them look, give a little hint of who these characters are, I'm purposely hinting at little slits and eyes in their suits. I, I have these characters designed elsewhere, so I'm kind of picking and choosing like uh, I did with this one character here. He has like a weird type of mouth thing that opens up kind of, I guess I would compare it to maybe like an Ultron type design or something in that era but not really like I mean his mouth can still hinge and shut so I decided to you know have his mouth open now just because it's open it can still be colored in dark blue or something doesn't mean it has, has to glow but that's me trying to give some little hint of their costume design something that kind of you know teases the uh the comic audience like a lot of old comic characters um, especially if you look at old avengers or marvel character you know a lot of times people when there was a new bad guy coming along I, but you know it was classic to kind of hint at the um let me stop that for a second it was classic to hint at the character in shadow and then maybe later on you would get the full real bill Hint, like if you try to go get the first appearance of a lot of characters, especially if they're bad guys, you'll notice that maybe they have two of first appearances, arguably. One being the shadow version in one issue, and the next issue being the full on version. This is kind of a classic technique uh, a lot of comics would use. Uh, I, kinda, I don't know why I can't think of it happening. I'm sure DC in that same era did it, but Marvel did it a lot. So there's definitely like a lot of bad guys, like two or three I can think of, like Taskmaster, Ultron, and even Apocalypse. I think they all have those appearances where they're there first in Shadow, 
and then then there's a full reveal of them and, and i i know for sure those three characters were revealed that way so anyways <laughs> back to this I, I, so with that being said if you're doing this correctly you've already had these characters designed so i'm going to hint at you know their shoulder pads and all that jazz uh back to the actual drawing technique so with this character here i'm establishing this shadow pattern I, I always refer to this type of stuff as a shadow pattern and what i mean is like i've dictated that it says heavy lighting uh the eyes are gonna be glowing because bad guy eyes should be glowing um i'm saying parts of the suit like his mouth will be open and then i'm taking from this lighting, his head's gonna cast a further shadow down, and that's gonna leave me with a couple of headlight or no, I said headlights. I'm sorry, highlights, not headlights. Headlights on the um, pectoral, and I'm choosing to then fade out the rest of the figure. Now, if you'll notice, I keep uh, uh, I've decided at this stage or committed to uh, to some degree a outline of that silhouette that's important that i've committed to that before trying to do the rest of the technique i'll talk about that in a minute so back over here with this guy i'm going to execute what i just described over here on this guy so here highlight on the head he has these spikes so you know the spikes are going to cast a shadow down trying to you know hint up more of that um Lighting technique here. Again, I'm doing the same thing. He has these slits in like a faceplate here. Uh, let me, I'll point to the guy I'm talking about. It'd be this guy right here. So he has these slits in his mouth. Um, so I'm, these will probably show up a lot. And that's a weird thing too. When you go noodling this shadows in, a lot of times this gets a little busy for the eye. But when this, when you ink this out, and that's why I think a lot of people that pencil should see your stuff, even if you have to ink it yourself, you should understand how some of these things work in inks. So that'll, you know, those white slits will there um, will pop out a lot when that's shaded in. When I shade it in with pencil, or when I it's shaded in with ink, but when it's shaded in with pencil, it may seem a little busy because it's shading the same direction as those lines. So it's kind of like a tricky optical illusion. But anyway, so I've I kind of I've committed to his you know body shape here. You know I know where his legs and hips and all that jazz is gonna be. You know he's his fist, all that. So all that's for the most part there. So I'm gonna you know drop the shadow there. Oh, he's got an arm. Pads in a part of the neck muscles here away. So around here is where I'm going to say he would be, you know, hinting at the highlight. His pectoral muscles would be picking up. So then that's going to shade in there and there. And I'm going to shade this in. And then I'm going to do his shoulder pads. I want to make sure I have like the shadow down pat at this point. Now, so when I got to these shoulder pads here, I, I definitely want the illusion that, you know, it's casting a thicker shadow and less is visible as I go from top to bottom. So at this point, going over here, I'm going to finish off this guy over here. Finish off his shadow and then at some point all of this would be black now to get the effect of like walking through mist or steam or fire that I'm talking about 
you can either do it. I think it's better to do it at an angle, especially say I have Phantom, Phantom, I keep Phantom, Phantom Stranger's Cape going this way, right? So I'm going to want the lines kind of, I would like them to have a wish in the same direction as the motion of his cape. So I'm going to slant all my feathering this way. Um, sometimes I feel some of this stuff comes out a little bit better if I use a French curve. And there are some big French curves that I use. Hang on, I think I've lost one. I'm going to have to pick one up here. So, if you want, if you're concerned about keeping a consistent arc or line, especially if you're inking yourself, you may want to uh, use a French curve. So, I sometimes keep like a little French curve, but I don't really know if I want to use a French curve. I don't. If, if you feel confident with the arc in your wrist or if you're going to get the right line, then don't, you know. Um, so I'm going to start basically trying to bleed or feather this out. Following the silhouette. And you should get like a nice effect like that. He has chain, so I'm going to make sure I hint at just a little bit of the highlights in the chains. Not too, too much. I feel like doing these videos, if I had to just be honest with everybody, I'm, I'm, I'm not a very um, tutorial type person. So you got, there's a bit of a learning curve here, but I feel like this would have been awesome time to do like a Bob Ross, like, oh, I'll draw a happy little chain over here, you know, do a little chain tutorial, talk about how to draw chains. It's funny, I learned how to, I'm a person who read books in the 90s and read a lot of Spawn, so you're learning to draw and you read Spawn and you're like a little teenage kid, you know, first thing you're going to do is learn how to draw a chain. So I might I might talk about drawing chains another time, but so I'm gonna hint at the um, I basically want just some highlights off the chain. I really don't want the full chain in there. Okay, so I'm gonna commit to this and uh now you'll notice I just broke the silhouette and I'll I'll show you why in a second. So again up here at the top I do need a heavy concrete black shape to then work off of. So again I'm gonna feather this down shade this out and then continue to feed that shadow coming out okay so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take my electric eraser and just go over the area I don't want and Let's just pretend I'm done with all of these guys. If I wanted to, you know, I can nick up and bleed out, you know, kind of feather that out a little bit. And, there, you know, arguably there's some of these techniques you can do, I feel, even better in Photoshop with uh, some of the tools and brush tools in Photoshop. Mainly because... Uh, some effects yeah, you can kind of control, like let's say if I wanted to use spatter or some type of hatching tool, I could just marquee this off. And Technically, you could do that with Frisket on your paper too and all that, but that's more of an ink effect. But um, I, I just 
feel like some effects, unless they're just like eye popping effects, like meaning like they make or break the actual final art piece. Like I kind of try to do them in Photoshop a lot today because there's so much control if something it's easier to play around with effects and like if it's not killing the original I just do it in Photoshop if you know it's an original that's va valuable and I would do the you know if, if I would do it on the board but if it's something that maybe is just kind of like yeah I, I, I may try that special effect in Photoshop because there's tons of brushes tons of tools and you can use the same technique and maybe come up with something a little bit better. Now, I'm fading this guy out quite a bit different than I did the other guy. And I'll, there's a reason for that. So, when I go to do this, the guy in the character that probably has the most black in him, which would be this character, right? He's going to be kind of up front. If I want to thicken that up. And the f guys with more of the gradient, you know, they start to go back because they're back in depth. So I have another little guy back here. <clears throat> kind of need to get rid of some of his cape because I definitely don't want to go in trying to erase the cape after I've drawn in the little guy. So let me make sure some of the construction lines on the cape are are gone and i mean i'm gonna hold this up so you can kind of see it's a nice optical illusion that there's a figure there and they're in depth and it kind of gives you that effect of these guys kind of you know either walking through flames or walking through mist or fog or something like that so and, and again when i get in um phantom strangers cape and the effect on it, I'm probably going to try to work in some of the lines in sort of the same way. And maybe have a, you know, this black up here and it's kind of fading into gray and then it fades into them. So it should have a nice fade effect. So, in theory. Um, I'll be honest. You can work in comics uh, many years and unless you've drawn the same exact thing. Like maybe I've done this technique and I know how this will work. And I've drawn a silhouette character before in a cape. But I've never feathered it out into the same gray as kind of like this. So I don't really know how this will look to be honest. Because I'm, I'm combining two technique, two different things for one effect. And in my head it should work and it might not work. But here's why it'll work, <laughs> because there's so many things you can do with, um, which is kind of the effect here. But even if, say, this doesn't work 100% at the end, when I see it in, in inks and everything, I can always say, have my colorist take these guys or take even Phantom Stranger and mess with the line opacity and give more of a, of a, of a, of a transparency to the effect to make this work. So... Long story short, I'm using an old technique when people didn't have Photoshop. And at the end, even if I combine this and I'm a little too over ambitious trying to combine two special effects in line artwork, which in theory should work. But let's say if I don't pull it off in inks or something goes wrong, I magically have Photoshop effects that can help pull that together today. So it's always good. I guess what I'm going to say is it's always good. And I feel like you, you know, it's, it's, it should go without saying, if you have a safety net, feel free to experiment. I feel free that even if I don't pull this off on one end, it'll come together in the other. So I may be playing with an effect here just because I know like I, I have a safety net. So I, I feel like, you know, there's, you know, it's kind of liberating in that sense. So right now I'm going to, I do feel if I just have gray and gray, I do need some blacks against white. So 
I really want my main bad guy leader up front here with his shoulder pads to pop out. So I'm gonna, you know, I, I want that black and white contrast. And a lot of this effect is just head and shoulders of these guys kind of coming through mist. So, now if you'll notice this big guy's shoulder here, I'm penciling in. And then I have this little mud guy monster thing here. So I make sure his, you know, his mud, mushy mouth thing kind of comes through. So... I have a problem here, if I want it to be a problem, where one guy might bleed into the other and they don't separate too, too well. So, that's where, you know, I'm going to like feather that out and then stop. But, I do want this hard line of their silhouette to kind of control... Now, there's different line weights and different inkers that could totally pull this off and not rely on this outline. But I do think that the character's suits and this these interesting silhouettes are very, you know, mysterious. And you kind of wonder what these shapes make up that I want to keep that line. So... There is a rhyme and reason that I want that heavy line. I, I feel like there is some information there of value that you you see the interesting silhouette. You see that these characters have armor and gauntlets on. They don't look like you know normal DC characters. Maybe they come from a different DC universe. Maybe their silhouettes kind of remind you of other character silhouettes you've seen in other DC events. So I want all that information to come across. So, I definitely want that part. Now, I kind of don't like how his shoulder patches pop o open. Like, they are just too reflective. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw in some gray on that. But don't take it all the way to the edge. So you guys can kind of see how that works. It's a simple technique, and honestly, I, I, I don't think this is like... And you see how like they kind of come up with this badass, shadowy, bad guy vibe kind of walking together, and um, I don't know. I, I think it's a nice effect, and then you have, like, Anth Metal Man, like, oh gosh, you know, like, after. So it'll be interesting to see once I get this together with Phantom Stranger and everything, how this comes up together. But I do think this is an old effect that I wanted to talk through. Uh, it's kind of simple, but I, I will say if you don't have these figures committed to in your head, or even their designs, this won't work. So like, don't think like, oh, I don't know what the bad guy is going to look next issue. Let me just pop in some shadows and I'll figure it out later. Because, and I'm not even sure if that's what they did back in the day. Because there was also off-panel word balloons and shadowy hands and all these other different tricks. And and you can, if you look up characters' first appearances, certain characters like Ultron or, again, Taskmaster or Apocalypse, you'll see what I'm talking about. I think Apocalypse had like an A belt buckle showing. So this is like kind of like a weird comic, very classic comic storytelling technique. I, maybe even syndicate shows have something like that where you see the the character. I will say in animation TV, it works differently, though, because you can always hear the person's voice. So, whereas in comics, you don't hear the person's voice. So, off-panel word balloons, you have no idea who the character is. Voice balloons or character balloons, word balloons, they're, you know, they're kind of... I don't know, they're, you know, they're, they're, there's no sex to them, there's no age, they're, they're literally just, maybe you'll have a font, maybe in 
the word balloon special, like Venom's word balloon or something, you'll recognize that that's the voice. But technically, you know, for the most part, you know, there's there's word balloons in comics. You know, you could always just have, you know, uh, Kingpin's word balloon off panel and you don't know it's Kingpin. You just know there's a word balloon and there's a silhouette. He's casting a shadow that kind of looks like Kingpin. So, you know, you, you assume it's Kingpin, but you don't really know it's Kingpin. So you just kind of have to come back next issue. And this is like an old trick. This is nothing new. I, I mean, I'll, I, I I promise you this is a very old, but it's pride and true and it works. And it, it's a nice cliffhanger suspense thing. And I, I know TV does it, but I, I, I I'd be... I can't, I don't want to sit here, I don't really, I don't watch a lot of TV shows that, it's very corny and cheesy in TV, I think, I think in comics, I don't know why, I, I want to say maybe the artists make it work, because I, I feel like this type of thing, it's, it's been done a million times, and whenever I see something like this that's been done a million times, I kind of want to embrace it, especially if it's older storytelling techniques, because, there's a lot of wisdom in older story storytelling techniques, and I feel like sometimes, like, we're so busy trying to be special and new on Twitter and everything that we look past a lot of the foundation of storytelling that we come from, and we try to pretend like we're reinventing storytelling, and, you know, like, we're you know, I'm so-and-so, and I'm special in comics and whatever, but, I mean, there's just... Uh, I have no Shane Davis technique. I mean, I, I, I'm a combination of techniques from a lot of people from different eras and line artwork and everything. And I, I'm not one of those guys that says, you know, oh, this is the Shane Davis grid and this is the way you do. I don't do that. And I, I personally, me, I and teach their own. I do not like it when people start naming old techniques after themselves like they invented it like it's just like dude come on like nothing's new everything under the sun's been done what is new is if you find an innovative way to use a technique like hopefully when i'm done this and maybe i'll try to do the thumbnail with the finished piece but once phantom stranger works in that this will have a nice mist effect to the guys and hopefully it'll work out well Again, I can't, I'm sure I've, it's been done. I don't think I'm doing anything new. But to me, I'm trying to be not a little innovative and mix two things together with an old effect and thinking and hoping it'll come out cool. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. Like, I don't know. Well, only time will find out here. So, but um, I don't know. I, I, I Again, this isn't like planned i was just like working on something i'm like oh damn like this is one of those things that i know i've done maybe once or twice but i don't know if anybody's ever did a tutorial on how to you know you know this technique not that you can do it all the time but it's fairly time time friendly and whenever there's a technique that's one, especially if you're a comic book artist with deadlines, it's time friendly. It's a good technique. And as you can see, you know, you end up with this very ominous bad guy. Like they almost look more evil because of the lighting and, you know, their walk on, you know. So like these characters will not look this cool when they're well lit. I promise you the shadow really, you know. But, you know, the way, there's, you know, what, what's that saying? The, you know, the way you enter the room, you know? So, like, you know, like a lot of readers, when they, if they get this on page 20, I think it's page 20, 21, whatever, pretend this is the last page in the comic, you know, the person's got a whole month to wonder, what is this guy? Look at those shoulders, you know, where did he come from? Why does he look like this? Wait, is it this character? Like, who are they, you know? blah, 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 what's this guy, you know, and, and, and you, the reader's imagination fills in the, the blanks, you know, so the bad part of that is chances are the reader's imagination is these guys going to look cooler, you know, that's the risk you run is, you know, are these guys going to look cooler to the guy's imagination that filled in the blanks, 
And that's that, again, um, you can't compete with the reader's imagination when you leave things in to blank. A master storyteller knows when to let the reader's imagination fill in the gap. And uh, you can use that to your advantage, you know, like especially if it's um, something to do with like gore or something that's violent. You know, you can never compete with the uh, reader's imagination with off-panel violence. You know, they're always going to fill in the blank, you know, stuff like that. Now, with the reader, we'll see, you know, a good classic example of the shadowy bad guy actually would be uh, the person that killed uh, Joe Chill. I'm not sure if I know I'm getting his name right. The guy, whoever the guy is that killed, uh, shot Batman's mom and dad. I mean, nobody knows that, you know, forever nobody knew what that guy looked like. He was just a shadowy guy in an alley that pulls up a gun. But, you know, everybody knows, like, hey, that guy shot Bruce's parents right in front of him. I mean, that's that shadow technique. They never, you know, it was always a, you know, a guy's face draped in shadow. And you could arguably say, even though you don't think about that part, I mean, you think about it, but you don't focus on that. You focus about Bruce and his mom and dad and the pearls. Frank Miller did that. And, you know, then some uh, a gun. Like, you focus on all of those things, but that shadowy guy holding the gun, the reader makes up this story, this bad person that he would shoot a mom and dad in front of the kid and then run away. I mean, I think, I don't want to get into that, but I mean, it's also pretty screwed up that, was he out of bullets? Did he just run away and say, hey, I'm just going to let you sit on this kid? And like, it, you know, like how bad of a guy was he? You know, was he a good enough guy not to shoot a kid? Like it, all these questions come up, but all these questions come up because, and you fill in the blank because you never saw the guy. Now, if I, if you didn't have the guy in shadow and he had one eye or, he had a, you know, or an eye patch, or he had a nasty scar on his face, or, you know, or a mustache. Like, you start building these characters. Like, yeah, I, as an artist, then you're you're building that bridge. And I don't even want to call it a bridge. I think that's a bad metaphor. But you're building that, that visual stereotype that that directs the person to who they are. And in some tech, and I think that's a good example of the shadowy bad guy probably like one of the best is you know that guy's always the whatever asshole that you want him to be to anybody who ever read batman's origin story he's always going to be the asshole you want him to be i actually thought in nolan's batman film it was really batman begins it was weird that they actually focus on him a little bit in the thing where bruce actually confronts him and all this stuff bruce wayne you know, and makes a decision. I like, I, 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 as a story, I'm like, yeah, no, that's brave that you made the decision to pull the, you know, to, to not shoot him or you backed away and somebody else shot him or whatever. Or maybe you were, that's what it was. He was going to, but somebody beat him to it. I, I, I get that story. And, but at the same time, that mysterious bad guy that then shapes Bruce Wayne for the rest of his life. And maybe even haunts him because Bruce never even knew who he was. Like, that's almost more, I feel like, important to have done. I, I don't know. I, that's why sometimes I think there's better storytelling techniques in comics and movies and TV. You just have to kind of analyze them. And, you know, and sometimes that's the thing. I feel like sometimes also we just want to do things different to say, I did it different. This is me. I think in sometimes drawing, and especially techniques like this, there's pride and true in what works. And, you know, you have to understand there's been people's lives they spent doing this. They've, they, they went through all these trials and executions, and some work, some don't. And it, I think it's just, I don't think it's a cop-out, but I think there's wisdom in just taking pride not pride and true but techniques that work and executing them as your own now, now not arrogantly going in saying i'm going to reinvent this and this is my technique but just saying like you know learn from things that work you know and then apply them in your way and you know there's no shame in that i'm not sitting here saying this is 
how I have to do it because I'm me and this is, you know, my technique. Now, I will say this is my drawing. I'm going to either fail or succeed at this. If this doesn't work, I can't then go point at, you know, like uh, whatever artist I, I can point to that did this technique and say it failed because he did it over here and I followed him and it failed. No. Like, I mean, I'm going to own the success of this, but I'm never going to say this is my technique either. And I think there's a lot of wisdom to that. And I think there's a lot of, hum you know, uh, humility in that. And I think that there's more growth from humility than there is arrogance. So I try to practice humility whenever I can in my drawing. And that's a philosophy of mine. I'm not here to push a philosophy on anybody, but I do suggest that you shouldn't look past pride and true techniques also don't try to crib them like they're your own like you know they are a comic book technique like I, this this technique has been done so many times I'm, I'm afraid to even name a guy because i'm sure there's 20 guys before him that did it and i don't want to i don't want to take away from them i mean i could sit here and say oh this issue of x-men over here you know jim lee or andy Kubert did it here and you know so and so did it here but it's like i don't know who did it first and chances are it wasn't a guy in comics. And then maybe, you know, it was a Windsor McKay syndicate strip or, or a, not even a strip, maybe a, a piece that he had like, you know, like a, like magazine piece, illustration, spot illustration. And it was the Grim Reaper or something in the background. And he used this technique, you know, it could, it, who knows where it came from you know, originally, but it's something that works and it works cool. And even with, like I said today, with computer colors, I can still use it as a crutch, but this technique, which was made for black and white, and even then black and white with limited flat color, even today with today's awesome computer coloring, this technique still works and it will still work even with today's razor sharp computer coloring. It Again, there are some things that were innovative for the technology they are that still work today like you know a caveman made a wheel out of a rock one day and it worked but will still work today even though we you know a tire a wheel on a car has you know oxygen rubber all these complicated things the basic wheel still works and I, I get that's a better metaphor than the bridge I used before but hopefully this was something you know interesting at the least and comic book geeky talking about storytelling techniques and certain characters that have appeared this way but i will say for all you guys that try to track down first appearance of characters and you see two appearances this technique is why you end up like which issue do is the first appearance it's this storytelling technique and and the off pan the classic off panel balloon or again another way to do the same thing is to cast shadow over the hero and then you just see the cast shadow of your character but you don't know who they are and the word balloon so then you argue again you get the same thing then you're arguing about the cast shadow and the shape of the cast shadow who that shadow is is it you know depending on if they have a hood horns cape all these things factor in you can then also put a foreground of their boot or something, and you see a little bit of the color. So you'd be like, wait, is that Superman's boot? Is that, you know, and then, you, you, I mean, there, there's all different variations of this storytelling technique. The trick, though, is that you don't give away, it's a wind-up before a punch. It's a set-up punch for the, for the, it's a jab for the cross. It's just a set-up for the, for the pal. So, like, but with the setup. And all, all of this make a little bit sense is maybe the cross or the pow, the hard punch, is a little bit more because of the setup. So if you do this technique right, you, you can, with, again, talking about anticipation between the next installment of the story, you can kind of set up. It, it, it kind of, I don't want to say falsely inflates, but it does cause a type of viewer anticipation you're as a storyteller you're manufacturing a type of anticipation that wouldn't normally be there and 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 again they do this in tv shows a lot more but sometimes i think it's a little bit the way they do in tv shows is the person turns they're shocked by an action you maybe hear a voice maybe you don't 
you don't see what they're shocked at, and it cuts away real quick. And comics, because we don't have actors' voices and stuff that people pick up on, and it gives away, you can do, again, the word balloon, the shadow, or in this case, these are new characters that nobody's seen. I'm choosing to hint at the shape of them here. So, and there's other things I could talk about with these guys, talking about different silhouettes and the way the big guy goes in the back, and he kind of, I still kind of wanted to emulate the small guy in the team, kind of like 10, so I kind of wanted a little guy back here, but I kind of want him globby and messy. So there's a lot of different factors to these guys going into this, but you could see, you know, for the record, it's a nice little effect. Um, very practical, makes you wonder what they look like the next issue, and that's, as a story teller, what I wanted to do. That's what the script wanted to do, that's what I wanted to do, and that was what we wanted to achieve with this, so... Hopefully this comes together when it's all said and done. Nice with Phantom Stranger there. And uh, I don't know. Hopefully somebody liked this. Anyways, hit like, subscribe, and uh, click on for notifications. I will be doing more live streams in the future. So I will say, you know, um, for updates on when those go live, I'll, you know, you know hit subscribe. And you'll get, hopefully get a notification. Um, and I'll catch you guys later. Thanks a lot. Bye.